The main features of the standard ring wraith armor are the rounded knuckles and the four lines of fluting in the five lames riveted over top of the solid vambrace. This is versus the witch king's spiked knuckles, three lines of fluting, and the plates that attach underneath the articulated forearm plates. The goal with this design is to create parts that fit well together with a good range of motion using sliding rivets and leather much like metal armor. So for this version, I'm incorporating the rivet holes into the 3D model to try to make the assembly process simpler and more consistent. I'm also trying out thinner parts to get a more realistic look, adding in the wrist spike and 3D modeling the detailing for the van brace. For the first test sprint, I created the fluting using a 3D pen to bond the edges of the cut lines, much like with the older gauntlet, but with later tests, I found that melting the seam with a soldering iron creates a cleaner seam, although it takes longer. I'm using paper fasteners to test fit the parts, see how they move together and make adjustments. I'm also using different colors of flexible filament to keep track of the different versions throughout the experimentation. Some of the main issues early on were the fit around the thumb and the sizes of the plates in relation to each other. The movie prop design seemed to vary depending on the scene, so I referenced historical examples to guide the decisions whenever it seemed like there was missing information. Because the plates are somewhat flexible, they don't lock together perfectly, so it's going to need an additional leather strip on the inside to keep the plates from gaping at the center. This strap doesn't interfere with the range of motion as demonstrated through a test using masking tape. I got tired of printing full-size parts that don't fit any of the gloves that I have, so for the next test I scaled everything down by half so the parts would print fast and waste less material. The knuckles kept giving me trouble, especially since my test material was super soft Ninja Flex instead of Cheetah, so even with 60% infill, the print was misshapen. To fix this, I made the top half solid and just did infill on the lower half. One other problem part was the tiny thumb top plate, so I had to up the flow rate to make that print solid, but otherwise the model scaled perfectly and is easier to experiment with at a smaller size. The hinge looked unrealistically skinny, so I marked out a better size with tape, adjusted the model, and printed a new one that looks much better. It's a living hinge that flexes instead of pivoting, but the function is there and it's modeled to resemble the style shown in a scene at Brie at the end of The Prancing Pony. To really test the design, I need to make a proper finished gauntlet. So I'm heat molding the curves, which is easy with these thin parts, and melting in all the lines of fluting with the soldering iron. The large thumb plate also gets curved outward at the back tip, and the hand plates need a bit of shaping and curving on the edges. I widened the holes to fit the size of the paper fasteners that will act as rivets, and put everything together for a pre-paint test fit. Since the hand and finger plates were printed flat on the print bite surface, they're already smooth, but the knuckles need some work to get rid of the support material. The top and bottom get trimmed to a point and the outer surface melted to a semi-smooth corroded metal finish. The wrist spike also gets melted on and blended in with the soldering iron, but the first version doesn't look right, so I designed a pointier version that prints in two halves which keeps the tip from turning into a mess towards the end of the print. Once melted together, the seam disappears and the new spike is looking way cooler. There's also a wide base on this version, so the part is easier to blend into the flat surface of the wrist plate. For now, I'm only 3D printing the detail portion of the fan brace. The rest of it will be craft foam. This design prints in two parts, which will get melted together at an angle along the chamfered inner edge. I also used the heat tool to smooth out the print lines. I printed a paper copy of the top view from my model to get the pattern for the forearm pieces, which get cut out in 2mm craft foam. I'm using contact cement to create the rolled edge details on the top of the outer arm piece and both edges of the inner arm plate. The outer piece gets scored along the lines where the 3D printed detail plate will attach, so it bends at the correct places. Then the detail piece gets glued in place with hot glue. This will also have decorative rivets, so I'm melting through the holes to fit the paper fasteners, then sealing the foam with wood glue. When using flexible filament and foam, it's important to use flexible finishes, which won't crack when the pieces bend. I'm using a variety of acrylic paints to begin covering up that green. Of course, it's easier if you're starting with something more neutral, but with this bright color, I need a darker base coat and then a layer of sealer. Let that dry, then I can build the more translucent metallics on top.
To make the paper fasteners look handmade and more appropriate with the weathered armor style, I'm adding dents with a hammer. Also, the rivets for the fingers get completely flattened out so the overlapping plates can lie flat. In addition to the rivets, I also need strips of leather to join the parts together. I'm using a thin sheepskin hide, which is appropriate for this mini gauntlet, as opposed to leather for a full-size version, which would need something sturdier. I got all my strips cut out while the silver paint was drying, so now it's time to weather that down. As usual, I'm using watered down umber, black, and burnt orange acrylic paint to wash over everything, including the rivets, wipe away excess, and do a few layers until it looks old and a little rusty. Once that's done, the parts all need two coats of acrylic sealer for a sturdy and flexible finish. The finger plates will be riveted to leather strips, so the holes need to be marked out at a consistent spacing and pre-punched. The flattened paper fasteners are the perfect size for this mini gauntlet, so it's a simple matter of tightening each piece down in the proper order. The thumb strip attaches to the large thumb plate with those two rivets, then the excess can be trimmed off. I'm also adding leather where the rivets join the hand plates, since this will provide a base for stitching the armor to the glove. Anywhere that the plates need to articulate, the rivets need to be set loosely, so it's a good idea to check as you go and make sure the range of motion doesn't get locked down at any point. The mini gauntlet is too small even for my hand, so I decided to make a mini hand to model the armor. I traced my hand, then scaled that down to fit the armor. The pattern gets traced twice onto craft foam and heat molded to give it some shape. Using contact cement, I can glue together the edges all around, leaving the wrist open. The hand can be posed by heating and bending the foam. Then the shell gets filled with a wire armature and some netting to make it solid. I'm using the same pattern to make the glove using a stretchy knit fabric and adding a seam allowance. The first glove was perfect except for all the holes, so I started over and used a different stitch pattern. That one worked. So now I have a hand model for sizing the straps and a glove to sew the armor onto. The buckle I planned to use for this ended up being too big, so I'm using armature wire to make a tiny buckle shape, adding the pivoting post and a back loop, then attaching the parts together with a strip of leather. The buckle and strap are riveted across from each other to create the forearm closure. I'm adding that extra strap down the center inside the hand plates, 
gluing it to each plate to prevent the plates from overextending due to the flexible material. This will be invisible once the glove is stitched in place. For this mini version, I'm only stitching the tips of the fingers, but on a full size version, I might make the leather strip the full width of the plates and stitch all the way down each finger. Also on a full size version, there should be rivets through the top of the knuckles and down into the finger plates, but for now, I'm gluing the strap to the back of the knuckle plate to keep the fingers from shifting upward. Once the finger and thumb plates are stitched down the base of the thumb and the edges of the hand plates can also be sewn in place. I'm weathering the straps and the glove using diluted black and umber acrylic paints so that all the parts of the gauntlet look equally ancient. Now that the prototype is complete, there are a couple of things I want to improve in the next iteration. First, the van brace would work better as a fully 3D printed part in a rigid filament. Also, the hinge for those parts ought to be wider or have two hinges to eliminate that lateral motion so the parts stay aligned. A proper buckle would be helpful, either printed or purchased at the correct size. And finally, I'll need to decide on a good type of rivet that will work for a full-size 3D printed gauntlet. I'll add links in the description to the sources that I've found helpful for medieval armor history and construction, along with the supply list as usual. Then once I get this design perfected, I'll make the kit available in my shop if you're interested in constructing your own pair of ring wraith gauntlets. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.